Stuart Haas Racing will appeal their massive 100-point penalty, Carson Hosevar gets blasted on Twitter, and William Byron gets all 25 points back from spinning Denny Hamlin out at Texas. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove got a spicy one today. But before we get too lost in the sauce, this episode is sponsored by The Pink Stuff. You may have seen them all over social media. They've been viral on TikTok. The Pink Stuff Miracle Cleaning Paste has been the number one selling all-purpose household cleaning product on Amazon for the past 18 months. They have a wide variety of miracle cleaning products as well. As y'all know, I just drove more than 2,000 miles round trip to and from Talladega Super Speedway. The Pink Stuff's Cream Cleaner and All-Purpose Cleaner have come in great handy getting my car back to a livable condition. Not that I live in my car, but I do spend a lot of time in there, so I want it to be nice, clean, and tidy inside and out. Their Miracle Cream Cleaner specifically is great for polishing the outside. The Pink Stuff has stuff for everything, though, from household cleaning to bathrooms to laundry. The Pink Stuff really works. There's a reason it's become an online sensation recently. You can check them out at Amazon.com, like I mentioned. You can also click the link down below, take you to thepinkstuff.com to learn more about all of their great products. You gotta try this stuff for yourself. Let's get down to business. We're gonna work in reverse chronological order. The first thing I saw when I woke up this morning is that Stuart Haas Racing has officially submitted an appeal. They are appealing that L2 penalty NASCAR handed down earlier this week that docked them 100 driver and owner points, fined them $100,000, suspended Rodney Childers for four weeks. Now, interestingly, the team is still going to use an interim crew chief this weekend at the Charlotte Roval. Engineer Stephen Duran will be atop the box. I guess SHR really wants to ensure Rodney Childers is available for Phoenix in case they lose the appeal and I fully expect them to lose this appeal. I, I know we're about to talk about an appeal that got overturned but the appeals panels have been pretty consistent this year when it comes to L2 penalties for modifying single source next gen parts. Brad Keselowski's RFK team submitted an appeal earlier this year but the penalty was upheld and then Front Row Motorsports when McDowell got hit with the same penalty they initially submitted an appeal and then withdrew it shortly thereafter. So I find it unlikely that Kevin Harvick and Rodney Childers win this appeal. Again, the issue is with the deck lid, apparently. We talked about in yesterday's video how both Rodney Childers and Kevin Harvick seem to suggest they were singled out by NASCAR due to how outspoken they've been lately. On Twitter, at least while they were vague, it seems like Harvick and Childers did not agree with NASCAR's decision or suspected something foul may have been afoot. We'll see how this appeals process plays out. I promised this episode would be spicy. That was just our snack. Let's get to the appetizer now. On Twitter, Twitter last night, NASCAR spotter for college racing in the Cup Series, Brett Griffin, put Truck Series driver Carson Hosevar on full blast. Let me just read these couple of tweets that he dropped seemingly out of nowhere. Meanwhile, Hosevar is a complete embarrassment to what we all do every week, and they do nothing. What a punk b****. Oh, oh my. The next tweet, he tagged Carson Hosevar and of course plugged his show. Hey, Carson Hosevar, come on DBC Monday and explain why you do all the stupid that they keep letting you get away with. Oh, okay, all right, okay. What prompted these strongly worded tweets from Brett Griffin? Well, I'm a big Carson Hosevar fan. I have been for a few years now. There's clearly some raw talent and potential there, but he's very young, and this year especially, he's been prone to severe lapses in judgment. Let's just put it that way. Going back roughly a year ago exactly, the end of last season, when he spun out on purpose, I believe at Las Vegas, to try and get a caution. Mm, not great, but not the worst offense either. Let's fast forward to this past summer at IRP when Carson Hosevar just right rear hooked Colby Howard down the straightaway. He was mad that Howard kind of gave him a bump in the previous corner, so he just wrecked him. And I don't care if you're racing on a short track, a dirt track, wherever, right rear hooking someone on the straightaway is never the right decision. It's unsafe. It's a total cheap shot. It's an embarrassing move. That was a really bad idea on Hosevar's part completely uncalled for. But that was months ago. So what brought these tweets on this week? Well, at Talladega. Just a few days ago, Josevar was up to his old bag of tricks once again, spinning out on purpose at Talladega to bring out a caution. NASCAR did hold him for a lap as a result, so they penalized him in the moment because they deemed that to be an intentional spin, but he's a repeat offender. Maybe should have held him two laps. I don't know. I didn't mention it because it was more of a racing deal, but go back to Charlotte earlier this year as well when he was racing Ryan Priest for the lead late, got a little loose, drove it in a little too hard, and took them both out. 
an over-aggressive mistake racing for the win. You'll remember that Ryan Priest called him out afterwards during his post-race interview. Not great, but every young driver's made an over-aggressive mistake or two like that in their time, so I'm not going to rake Carson Hosevar over the coals for that one, but he's had some bad moments this year. He's certainly had a handful of low lights, as we just saw, so I get why people would be coming after him, why people would be upset, why he may have some enemies in and around the NASCAR garage. Y'all know me, though. I typically try to avoid making incendiary comments, either on this show or on Twitter. I'm not a big fan of the macho fake tough guy online routine, but I don't disagree with Brett Griffin's ultimate point. Osavar has gotten away with some silly stuff this year, and I do think he deserves to be called out for some of it. He's young, he's got plenty of time to learn. I still believe there is raw talent there. He's going to be in this sport for at least a number of years, but he's got to clean some of this nonsense up, in my opinion. We've had our snack, we've enjoyed the appetizer, our mouths are starting to tingle a little bit. Now let's get to the main course. This is where things are gonna get spicy. So the big news yesterday, William Byron and Hendrick Motorsports appealed the 25 point penalty that Byron was assessed for intentionally spinning Denny Hamlin out under caution at Texas Motor Speedway. And after listening to their appeal, the appeals panel decided to rescind all 25 points, give them all back to Byron. They completely removed the points penalty. Now they did increase the monetary fine from $50,000 to $100,000, but the big story here are the points. Going into the final race of this round, William Byron is now above the cut line. He's in seventh place, plus 14. That now moves Daniel Suarez down to the final transfer spot, and now both Chase Briscoe and Austin Sindrick are the first drivers out. They are 12 points behind Suarez. That completely changes the complex of this weekend's race at the Charlotte Roval, a strategy-dependent race where competitors will have to make the conscious decision, do we go for stage points in the first two stages, or do we try to set ourselves up to have the best chance at winning at the end? William Byron was going to be minus 11, he's now plus 14, a massive 25 point swing that has major implications across the entire playoff bubble. This is huge, this is a huge decision. Let's talk about the decision. The appeals panel, notoriously light on details, they rarely give an in-depth explanation as to why they decide the way that they do, but they did publish two sentences pretty much, to explain why they rescinded all 25 points. They wrote, the applicants violated the rules set forth in the penalty notice. The panel amends the original penalty assessed by NASCAR to read $100,000 fine for William Byron and no loss of NASCAR Cup Series championship team owner or driver points. Let's put on our analysis hats for a moment. That first point, that's the appeals panel saying that yes, William Byron broke the rules as they are written in the NASCAR rulebook. Scrolling to that section of the rulebook, here is the rule that they broke. Quote, intentionally wrecking another vehicle whether or not that vehicle is removed from competition as a result. So the appeals panel is saying, yes, William Byron intentionally wrecked Denny Hamlin under caution. But now let's talk about the second sentence where they say, oh, no points penalty, just an increased monetary fine. I guess that they just decided the NASCAR penalty was too harsh. Yes, they increased the fine, but the points are the most valuable part of this entire equation. Let's go back to the rule book for a second, and I think we can see why NASCAR issued the penalty they did originally. Wrecking someone intentionally is one of the rules that, quote, could result in a loss of 25 to 50 driver and team owner points and or a $50,000 to $100,000 fine and or one race suspension, indefinite suspension, or termination. Or, okay, so the appeals panel said, well, you don't have to give them a points penalty and a fine. You can just pick one or the other. And the panel in this case decide a fine, albeit the max fine you're allowed to give for an incident like this, was the right punishment and the only punishment he should sustain. <sighs> the appeals panel and NASCAR, two separate entities, not on the same page. Let's compare what William Byer did to previous incidents this year. In the Xfinity series, still a NASCAR sanctioned series, Noah Gregson got docked 30 points and fined $35,000 for intentionally spinning Sage Karam out under green. 30 points. Now, to be fair, I don't believe the team ever appealed that penalty. If they had, perhaps the appeals panel would have overturned that points penalty as well. NASCAR's penalty to William Byron was at least somewhat consistent, so why is the appeals panel not on the same page? I need an explanation, and I think NASCAR needs an explanation from the appeals panel because they basically just set the precedent that you can spin someone out under caution and not face any points penalty for doing it. This is like if in football, during a timeout, you go over to the other team's sideline and just kick their starting quarterback in the knee as hard as you can and get no penalty for it. 
I need a better explanation. What was the reason for rescinding the points penalty? It was it because, oh, well, you know, this kind of call, NASCAR should have made that call during the race in the moment, and because they missed it, because they didn't have eyes on it, it's not right to issue this penalty later in the week. Is that their reasoning? Because, again, that Noah Gregson penalty for Road America, that was handed out in the middle of the week. I guess what I'm learning from this is that Noah Gregson and Junior Motorsport should have appealed that penalty. They probably would have won. But the appeals panel is just supposed to analyze the NASCAR rulebook, and to my knowledge, there is no line, no paragraph in the rulebook that says you have to issue this kind of penalty during the race. Like, there's nothing stopping NASCAR from handing this penalty out on Wednesday, so that can't be the explanation. I think it is important to differentiate NASCAR from the appeals panel. They are separate. They are not the same people. NASCAR is probably frustrated today that the appeals panel chose to overturn large parts of the penalty. Hunter Nickel, who is a former TV executive, Dale Penilis, he's a track operator over at Bowman Gray, and Kevin Whitaker, the owner of Greenville Pickens Speedway, those three made up the appeals penalty for this decision. I did just a couple quick Google searches and that Dave Penilis, he was also on the appeals panel for the Mike Harmon unauthorized testing penalty earlier this year, he was on the panel that chose to uphold that massive penalty. It only got overturned later during a final appeal by a completely different guy. Penelis was also on the appeals panel earlier this year that upheld Brad Keselowski's massive L2 penalty. So he's been upholding penalties for the most part this year. I know every situation, every penalty is a little bit different. Hunter Nickel was on the appeals panel earlier this year that overturned Thor Sports disqualification appeal. So there really is no correlation. I can't really pick out a specific trend. And the point is, this has been a bad year for NASCAR officiating. I saw this tweet from NASCAR man on Twitter, and he highlighted it. Mike Harmon had his penalty overturned in January. Matt Crafton, I just mentioned his DQ at Darlington, was overturned in May. Jeremy Clements, just a couple weeks ago, had his penalty overturned from Daytona. And now William Byron, another massive penalty that NASCAR handed out, being overturned by a separate independent panel. This is bad for NASCAR because it sort of undermines the credibility of their officials. They may slap you with a big fine, but if you're the driver, the team, a fan, you're really just waiting on what the appeals panel is going to say. They seem to hold all the power here and they are not on the same page as NASCAR, it seems. So I don't know. It's, it's frustrating. Aside from the structural element of this, perhaps NASCAR needs to add a paragraph to their rule book that says, hey, if you just bump a guy under caution, maybe it's, it's not a 25 point minimum penalty. Maybe there is like a five to 15 point version that they could add that would maybe the appeals panel would have gone with instead. But that is a separate conversation that may need to be had over the off season. In the here and now, the fact that William Byron just got away with dumping Denny Hamlin, costing Hamlin valuable positions in a playoff race under caution, that's highway robbery. Holy moly. Going back for a moment, I understand why Byron was mad at Denny Hamlin at Texas. Hamlin raced him aggressively on a restart and kind of forced him up into the fence. I get Byron being frustrated, but spinning him out under caution was not a justified response in my opinion, and it deserved a points penalty. Drivers have been suspended for wrecking people under caution in the past. I don't think they needed to go that far with Byron in this case, but a points penalty, a significant points penalty, was justified. It's clearly written in the NASCAR rulebook. If you blatantly wreck someone intentionally, NASCAR has the right to dock you 25 to 50 points. And I know Byron never openly admitted to wrecking Hamlin on purpose, but he did say he meant to hit him under caution. I don't know. I don't get it. NASCAR blew it by not making a decision during the race, not having eyes on it, not being able to see it, make a call right then and there. But when they handed down that penalty on Wednesday, I thought it was more or less the right call. So I am shocked and quite disappointed, honestly, to see the points penalty reversed. The appeals panel just set a very unfortunate precedent that you can basically wreck your competition under timeout. Go back to my football analogy. It's it's silly, it's absurd, but I mean, I think it's kind of accurate. This may be the wake-up call NASCAR needs to adjust their rule book slightly, their penalty system for aggressive driving on track, but they'll have to make that change during the off season. Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. It's very complicated. You gotta do things as they are written in the text. And in this case, I think the appeals panel, I think just got it wrong. I think interpreted it incorrectly, in my opinion. But I wanna hear what you all think. I told you this episode would be spicy. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. We got a ton of exciting content coming out over the next few weeks. I can't wait to start sharing it with y'all. As always, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters as well for going above and beyond the extra mile to support the show. I greatly appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of your Friday. I will see you later this weekend. It's Roval weekend. I'm so, so excited. Gonna be a good time. Gonna be a stressful, exciting cutoff battle, especially on Sunday. Thanks for watching, y'all. Take it easy.